magnetic field is given by the letter B. I don't know why, but that's what it is. This mu that I'm drawing right there, that's the magnetic permeability. And that tells you how well the magnetic field is being uh, conducted. And that's why a lot of electromagnets use a soft iron core in the core, which is why they call it a soft iron core. So that it, conduct, it can conduct the magnetic field better. Now, capital N, that's the number of turns. The more turns you have, the stronger the magnetic field. I is the current. You can increase the current usually by increasing the voltage. And L is the length of the coil. So I've got a, I've got a solenoid like this. It's got a certain number of turns. It's got a certain current running through it. I'll just connect it with a DC circuit here. And it's got a certain length. And the smaller the length, the bigger the magnetic field. Now, what about permanent magnets? I mean, permanent magnets, you don't run a current through them, right? And yet they still work. And they produce the same kind of field as the electromagnet. So here's how that works, yeah, roughly. Let's draw an atom again. And let's say that, you know, approximately what happens is the electron is circling around the nucleus. Circling at a pretty good distance, by the way. The distance, the size of this atom is one one hundred one one hundred thousandths the, the radius of the orbit. So if, uh, if this nucleus was, say, a yard across, then the nearest electron would be, uh, let's see, uh, 100,000 meters, 100, it's about 60 miles away. So it's pretty intense, but What's happening is the electron is moving in a circle. And it's, since it's a moving charge, it's generating a magnetic field. Now, all electrons do this. All atoms generate magnetic fields, but generally the electrons are all in different, different uh, orientations. You know, you've got one here going this way, and one here going this way, and one here going this way. And so they all cancel each other out. But there are certain materials. They're called uh, ferromagnetic materials. And what you can do is uh, you can heat them up so they're soft. And the electron orbits can, the, actually, the orientation of the atoms can change rather easily. And you can put them in a very strong magnetic field. You can take a, a big solenoid. You can stick them inside the solenoid when they're hot and soft. And you can, the strong field of the solenoid will line up the electrons, uh, the orbits, in a certain direction. Not all of them, but a lot of them. So it's got a, its own magnetic field. So you've got all these electrons' orbits lined up in the same direction. And then you hold that magnetic field on it as you cool the bar, the soft iron bar, for example. And as it cools, you lock in place that orientation. And that's how you create a permanent magnet. The other thing I can tell you is they have two different kinds of, they call it two different, different they have two different kinds of forces for an electromagnet. Um, if there's my electromagnet and there's the core right there, if I'm drawing the object towards the electromagnet, that's called the pulling force. And once it gets inside, it's not going to go through. It's going to stay right in the middle, and that's called the holding force. The holding force is stronger than the pulling force, of course, because the magnetic field is strongest in the center of the core, and that's how solenoids work.